You're listening to the Groove Rider. Fabio. Groove Rider. Fabio, Fabio. Groove Rider. Oh, wait, 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 wait. In the last few years, three guys out of Perth, Australia have simply reshaped drum and bass music. They debuted in 2003 with a single Vault, leading them to sign with Adam F and DJ Fresh's Breakbeat Chaos Records. They have been championed by us, Andy C, Marianne Hobbs and Zane Lowe. Please welcome a band that many either consider to be drum and bass or a rock band. Will you decide? In this documentary, Radio One Story of Pendulum. Born trio from Australia have taken drum and bass from the underground and back into the mainstream. This is the Pendulum Story. It's really opened up a lot of people's ears and eyes to a genre that had been basically put down as being deceased in the media from like 10 years ago. They're taking it to the point Goldie took it when he was you know, at his, his highest point in doing music. It sounded a lot different to anything else that was out there as well. The production was incredible. It was just an incredibly huge track. They have ideas that surpass drum and bass, that surpass music even. The doors are open so other people can creep through and show that drum and bass has got some truly uh, good producers. In 2002, Paul, Rob and Gareth were inspired to form a group when they heard two life-changing records, Complex Messiah and Bad Company's Nitrous. Hi, my name's Rob. My name's Gareth. And we're Pendulum. Nitrous by Bad Company. I've never heard dance music that had such aggressive energy. Music like Hardcore and Gabba was aggressive, but sort of in, a, in almost like a silly way. This was just really, just sounded so dark and twisted. Me, uh, Messiah by Conflict. Pretty much the same thing, I mean, that was the first sort of drum and bass tune I heard where it actually had things distorting in the beats and just futuristic, perfected, clean but heavy sort of sound. The only other clean dance music would be trance and that's sort of the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. They went into the studio and began work on their own beats, testing them out in their own DJ sets in Perth. The fruit of their labour was the track Vault quickly snapped up by drum and bass legend Doc Scott for 31 Records. It was clear that they created a monster. Ed Rush was the first one to play Vault in a sort of prime time drum and bass slot. The first tune had a set at the end and I, I was actually listening to the set and watching the video off a web, uh, web, off, camp feed. Off, a yeah. web off a web stream and I heard Vault coming and I was just like damn, that's fucking sick. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was weird. It's being all the way over the other side of the world in, the, in our parents' houses, watching this, yeah. watching the end completely just bounce off the world. That was the first time, I guess, we kind of really got to witness what the tune was doing because we didn't really have an idea. We heard things like DJ Fun Bags rewound it 19 times at what WMC, but we didn't even know what that even meant. I remember watching it though, and, and, and I was thinking, damn, I, I hope this isn't as far as it goes. I hope I'm not just going to hear this and then never again. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. Groove Rider. First couple of times I heard it, I thought, well, I don't know about this, but then I caught it, and when I caught it, I couldn't let it go, and I'm still, you know, kind of playing it today. So, yeah, five years later, and it's still in the box, gotta be a big tune. 
DJ Bailey. It made more of an impact on the scene than tunes that were around at the time. Not only because it was such a full and noisy tune, but it managed to find some sort of space within that tune as well. So uh, as well as it being loud and in your face, it had this thing of clarity about it. And that's one thing that has always been uh, bigged up about Pendulum's production. It's now hailed as a classic, winning best single of the 2003 Knowledge Awards. This announced Pendulum as the next big thing. They were soon being contacted by every drum and bass label in the UK. But it was DJ Fresh and Adam F from Breakbeat Chaos who gave Pendulum an opportunity they couldn't resist. DJ Fresh. They lived in Australia and I, I felt the only way they were really going to get to grips with drum and bass in a way that was going to translate to something that could be played by UK DJs and UK clubs was for them to come over to England and to understand what was working in English clubs and who, who all these people were that they were sending tracks to over the internet. So, um, you know, we tried to work out a way of doing it and Adam and I were, were talking at the time about going out to the States and working on some hip-hop stuff because Adam had all of his hip-hop stuff going on. Um, so we thought it'd be a great time for us to disappear and then the flat would be empty and they could move into it and I had some equipment they could use and, you know, they were obviously brought over some of their own stuff as well. So it was just a, just a timing thing, really. It just kind of worked out well for them and it kind of gave us an edge as well to, to say to them, OK, we've got something else to offer you. It was just fate, I think, really. Touching down in London, the birthplace of drum and bass, the boys got a little freaked out by life in the city. I wandered through the weird and lurid landscape of another planet. <laughs> It was a very weird experience. Oh, man. I remember sitting in a restaurant on Finchley Road, I think it was. We just sort of walked down from Dan's flat to, to some restaurant, and we were just sitting there, me and uh, Paul and Paul's girlfriend. I don't think guys had come over yet. And we were just, like, watching the rain out the window going, this place is weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, a bit of a culture shock at first. As the first act signed to Breakbeat Chaos, they released a series of records that devastated the dance floor. Bottom line is, this next tune I'm going to play is my favourite Pendulum tune, well, one of them, and it's coming from the new LP. Now, I've been told, Groove, you're not supposed to play this tune on the air or else there's going to be repercussions. I said, what do you mean there's going to be repercussions? He goes, boy, I think I'm going to have to, you know, call some solicitors in and stuff. I said, what do you mean? goes groove don't play the thing on the air but you know what i break the rules because i am groove rider this is my show and we play what we want when we want somewhere out there in the vast nothingness of space and i'm playing it from start to finish somewhere far off. it's called slam it's understand this tune i've got my solicitor standing by you can't do nothing to me Leaning stars in the obsidian sky Love this tune, pendulum, forward, stand and salute. And the sea, confined to a tiny spit of sand, unable to escape. Mike D, hold tight, swing the flag, Mike D, it's that time, dog. On this small planet, on Earth, under what civilization? That has got to be like one of my top 10 drum and bass tunes of all time. It captures some things that I didn't think could exist in drum and bass. It's caught a proper hip hop loop for me. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of people try to do that, but I don't catch it properly. I could have easily thought the Neptunes made the front of that tune. And then you had the drum and bass part to go with it. I thought, oh my God, if I can play a tune after a few years, still play it in the box today, then it's got to be a massive tune. I guess we became known for making dance floor anthems and I guess we kind of wanted to make a bigger one than our last one and I guess Another Planet was one of those tunes that was the biggest at the time and we wanted to do bigger than that. And then at the time there was sort of all these all these other people coming around in the scene, you know, trying to do a one-up on us, you know, creating the next biggest track and then the next biggest track and we were like, right, we just want to put this to an end and make the biggest track on this next album and just wipe everyone out with it. 
I remember hearing how well Slam was doing on Radio 1 and I was just like, well, that's weird that they picked the heaviest, most rave sort of oriented track, you know, to play during the daytime. Is this bass really strong enough? Chase and Status. Pendulum Slam track was, it was massive for them. That really brought drum and bass back into the limelight in terms of daytime radio. It sounded a lot different to anything else that was out there as well. The production was incredible. It was just an incredibly huge track. In 2005, they released their debut album, Hold Your Color, selling over 200,000 copies. At that point, the biggest selling drum and bass album of all time. DJ Fresh. He came out in July. And I remember the distributor saying, I think we, you know, we might be able to sell 30,000 copies of this album by Christmas. And I remember sitting there with Adam and Adam looking at the distributor and being like, what are you talking about, mate? There's no way this is going to sell 30,000 albums. And I, I was kind of not sure because obviously being a believer in that whole Rocky sound, I, I wanted it to. And I wanted it to get that attention and, and to do what it deserved to do, which was to sort of reach out to all the people that are into indie and rock music and say, hey, there's something cool about drum and bass that you you can enjoy as well but then when we did actually get to December I think we'd sold about 60,000 albums and everybody just couldn't believe it and then obviously it's gone on to be so much more than anyone could really anticipate You're listening to The Pendulum Story on Radio 1 In 2007, Pendulum signed with the Warner Music Group and began work on their follow-up album, In Silico. It turned into a nightmare. In Silico was the hardest thing I've done ever. It was just a nightmare from start to finish. There was a lot of expectations being thrown around. There was, there was a lot of ideas that different people had. Um, a lot of pressure we put on ourselves. Changing your mind about certain things. There was a lot of times that I was just making something for like a week and then turn around after that and go, you know what, I hate that entire thing and I've just wasted a, a week a week doing it. So Part of it was that we did want to go in a slightly different direction and, and try a hand at something a bit more ambitious. Along with that, we sort of... We wanted to check that we weren't going to turn around at the end of this three years, which is which it was between albums, and then find out that we just jumped into a very big pool of rock music out of you know the drum and bass pool in which we were in which we were successful. The hardcore drum and bass fans were shocked and divided with their new direction and sound. Purist drum and bass fans haven't been happy with the album. DJ Bailey. I think it's been slanted more towards the live aspect, the performance aspect of a uh, drum and bass artist, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, you have to change things around sometimes to make it fit with what you actually plan to do in the future. It's kind of not for me. I'm a club person. And I'm not really into bands. So um, for those that are into bands, it's perfect for them. Those that are into the club thing and were into Pendulum in the earlier days, maybe not for them like me. I look at it like drum and bass was lucky to receive some drum and bass from Pendulum and not the other way around. I think that we're very privileged as a scene to have had somebody so brilliant and talented give us a year or two years of their input. To expect talented and creative people to continuously abide by the laws of drum and bass is just unrealistic. They have ideas that surpass drum and bass and surpass music even and that they need to be able to develop those ideas without having people be close-minded about what's expected from them. It would be unfair to themselves and it would be unfair to music because it's all about when you do something underground like drum and bass, bringing people into it, not just keeping the people that are there happy. It's now their time to, to think about them, their own music, not what drum and bass expects of them.
drum and bass tends to be a very insular scene. It doesn't care what anyone else thinks. It just does its own thing. It fires away in its own, under it, its own power, basically. If you try and stray, a, you know, a footstep away from what's acceptable at that point in time, then, you know, you can expect a fair amount of backlash. We get so bored easily and we never really wanted to feel like we were being suffocated by a genre instead of just making whatever we wanted to. That willingness to sort of not care too much about whether it fits into the drum and bass thing that people have picked up on, apart from everyone in drum and bass, of course. Next stop was taking the pendulum sound from studio to stage. They brought in three more recruits, Perry Gwyneth on guitar, Paul Kodish on drums, and Ben Mount, also known as MC Verse. Their goal, to give fans the ultimate live experience. We didn't really know how we were going to put it together, who we were going to work with, or how to do anything. I mean, all we really knew is that we really wanted to do it, and we knew what we didn't want to sound like. We didn't want to be a band that was not going to be 100% live. We didn't want laptops involved. Actually, there is a laptop involved, but not in the way that the conventional dance bands would be using it. DJ Fabio. I think live drum and bass is a very important, integral part. Early prototype jungle like Utah Saints and bands like that, Shades of Rhythm, Alternate, back in the day, those guys were live and they used to come in and they used to smash it. And it used to be part of the scene. cool that you guys are a fully fledged live band now. Zane Low. How has the whole transition been? Has it been easy for you to, to step up to the mic as a performer? Uh, I mean, it took a bit of getting used to it as first, especially since we're normally pretty reclusive studio types. Yeah. But um, I don't know, well, once you played a couple of shows, that was it. I mean, it's, it's such a better rush than DJing, trying to recreate these track lines. May 2008, the second Pendulum album, In Silico, was released. At this time, they performed at Radio One's Big Weekend in Maidstone, Kent. That day, the band made their mark in the live arena. That was sort of the first time we'd seen the sort of general public come out and go mental yeah, to, general public, to yes. a Pendulum track. And, you know, we're not talking... 2,000 people down at Fabric or The End or one of our shows up north. Uh, this is like 10 to 20,000 people that we've never seen before, dressed in ways that we've never seen before. Just members of the general public, I'm going to say. It was mad. We must have watched that footage about you know 20 times after we saw it, just trying to get our heads around what we just did. There's a huge amount of anticipation for Pendulum because word had spread about the live show it being more of a rock, a rockier kind of affair, more like a prodigy meets Rage Against the Machine type thing. And then when they took to the stage, they just had the setlist nailed, you know? Um, they didn't come, come through with any sort of album cuts. They came through with the hits. They hit the Prodigy remix really early on, which is a very recognisable riff. And I think that the, the dynamics that have worked so well for artists like Rage Against the Machine, Foo Fighters, Prodigy, people like that, which is, you know, knock them out the box for 64 bars and then take them down for 32. Let them recover, let them breathe, and then bring them straight back up again and, and make them bounce. I think people were expecting McDonald's to be the highlight or whatever, and no disrespect, but I think Pendulum stole that. In Silico reached number two in the UK album charts. The first top ten entry for a drum and bass album since Goldie's Timeless and Ronnie Sighs and represents new forms. Success was in the palm of their hands. The festival circuit was the next stop for Pendulum, including performances at the Download Festival in Derby and Puckle Pop in Belgium, to name but a few. But while on their American tour, a visitor from the other side came to the dance. As Gareth explains. 
in Denver. We played a show. It was you know, a sick show. It was, it was, the crowd was mental and everything. And then a couple of hours after the show, we're all sort of standing in the um, venue, just sort of hanging out, waiting for the crew to load out the equipment so we can move on to the next city. And this, this girl comes in, and uh, she's saying, I've lost my friend. He's in an urn, and one of our guitar techs said, um, well, he must be pretty small. And she's like, no, he's dead. She'd brought him his ashes in an urn and water around her neck. Because he would have wanted to go to the show, Because apparently. he was, this is what he would have wanted, and he was a big fan. All that was left on the dance floor was six big bins that had all the bottles had been swept up and put into. And when she started rummaging through that, I had to leave. And she was freaking out as well. She probably would have had to have gone home to that dude's parents, I think, without the urn, being like, I lost him. Come on. At least he's he's there on the dance floor, you know, where he wanted, probably wanted to have been. The biggest crowd of the day uh, in terms of size of stage and size of crowd is... I is think actually just award, generally... <laughs> the award goes to uh, this next band who are on, as we speak, on the Radio 1 Enemy stage. Every festival we've played at this year from Radio 1's Big Weekend right through, they have had a massive, massive, massive turnout. This is Pendulum. Big Weekend was a, definitely one of the biggest highlights and that became a benchmark actually for us comparing every other show to it like, and how well they did. But standing on stage at Reading and just looking out, I think that was a bit of a pinnacle point as well. Watching the footage afterwards and you could see, see some aerial shots where there were about 20,000 people outside the tent trying to get in we were just like, well, that's, that's something special. <laughs> There was one point I was on stage and I was looking down at the audience at the front and um, I've never seen people pouring, like flowing like water. They were flowing over the barriers because there was that many people surging forward. It just looked like the water spilling over the edge of a pool. Of a pool, like but it was people over. Just, just falling over the barrier, yeah. over the front. Literally, literally these big burly security guards standing up on crates just with their, with, you know, with their massive arms, pulling one person at a time with each arm just like that, just pulling them out of the crowd because they were just getting crushed. By the time it got to the end of the summer, people are then talking about, okay, who, who have been the bands to watch throughout the summer and, and who haven't I seen yet? And I think that weekend it was like, it really was, you know, all about MGMT and it was all about, you know, Pendulum. And I think that that's because a lot of other people on the ground had seen them and said, whatever you do, don't miss Pendulum, don't miss them. And, and that created a huge wave of excitement across the weekend for that, for that show. You're listening to The Pendulum Story on Radio 1. With Pendulum putting drum and bass back in the public consciousness, has their success opened the door for others? Now that Pendulum's done their thing, the doors have opened so other people can creep through and show that drum and bass has got some truly uh, good producers. The next person to go on that train is uh, Chasing Status. getting their live things together now and I think there will be more to follow there's no question about that Pendulum have been incredibly important in raising the profile of drum and bass especially sort of into the mainstream crossing over into a whole different market now they've progressed even sort of beyond drum and bass they've gone more into the rock thing but initially when they came through they created such a storm and wrote so many sort of massive influential tunes that they really elevated the scene you know I remember when I used to feel something I remember when I used to feel something to sort of earn people's trust in a way musically you know you give them one track and they think it's kind of cool but they're not sure whether to trust you yet you know and then you give them another one they're like okay and by the time they've played five of your tracks you send them a track and they don't even listen to it they're just like yeah I'm into what these guys do so it's kind of building up that trust really and Pendulum have helped earn drum and bass the trust that now is going to allow people like Chase and Status to get the benefit of the doubt Right now, while Pendulum are touring around the world, they're already starting to make album number three. And for those beginning the journey to become the next big thing, Pendulum have some words of advice. You've got to be in it to a masochistic degree. If you're not literally 
willing to spend that much time trying to get it right. That you don't have a life anymore. If you're not willing to walk the tightrope of nervous breakdown, then I think that's what it's what it's all about. You know, if you're not going to will, be willing to put that sort of effort down to make it, then get out of the music industry because there's enough people like that as it is. Pendulum are taking it to them. You can't even say another level because it's gone past that now, you know. They're in the ultimate in drum and bass right now as towards the mainstream. You know, they're taking it to the point Goldie took it when he was, you know, at his, his highest point in music. Obviously, they've made their mark. I don't think there's many people that have made more of a mark than they have within drum and bass and within dance music. And I'm sure it is just the tip of the iceberg. I, I can't wait to hear what they're going to do next. And I think anybody that wants to hate on what they're doing because it's not what they're used to should realise that without people like them and without that level of creativity and the, the willingness to move forward and try new things, drum and bass would never have existed in the first place. A lot of people are saying drum and bass is back, drum and bass never really left. It's just that Pendulum kind of have given them something they can uh, listen to and understand and, uh, so to show that drum and bass is still here. People at Radio 1 and One Extra and so on and so forth are much more open now to hearing this fast, tempo, loud music. You know, it's, it's really opened up a lot of people's ears and eyes to a genre that had been basically put down as being deceased in the media from like 10 years ago. This has really given us all an opportunity to show what we can do technically and musically and it's, it's great that the public is now not so adverse to it. When our career started, you know, used to meet a girl somewhere or meet someone, oh, what do you do? I make drum bass. Oh, isn't that dead? Well, no, it's not. And clearly now what's happening, you can see it isn't. So they're really opening doors for everyone, I believe. In 2003, Pendulum arrived on the planet with the sole mission to rock civilization. In the last 12 months, they have emerged as one of the biggest bands of the year. Listen to the Groove Rider. Fabio! Groove Rider. Fabio, Fabio! Groove Rider. Or Radio 1. Radio 1. Radio 1. That was Radio 1 story of Pendulum. You can listen back to the documentary by logging on to bbc.co.uk slash Radio 1 and clicking on the Fabio and Groove Rider pages. Watch out for the band in 2009, including tours across the world, plus album number three in 2009.